Hello and good day to everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss about pre-stack versus post-stack migration. Also, we will look into time versus depth migration. This is actually a very important topic and most of the students have confusion in doing pre-stack, post-stack, time, depth migration. So in this video, you are going to understand about the importance of pre versus post stack migration. And the second ultimate goal of this uh, video lecture will be the flow of data handling for migration strategy. I mean, you will understand which migration strategy you have to follow for which type of data. <clears throat> So let's start with the understanding time versus depth migration. So time migration is actually uh, an appropriate as long as the vertical variations are moderate or it's mild. So I mean in the case of subsurface is homogeneous or there is no lateral velocity changes, then there is no need of going for depth migration. So we just remain with the time migration i will explain why we remain for time migration because of the cost and computational power that are the cases to remain with the time migration so let's say if uh, lateral velocity gradients are significant let's say you are, must have to consider the uh, laterally varying velocity then we need to use the depth migration uh, and the output output of this migration will be a depth section, obviously. So when a stack section is migrated, we use the migration theory to the data recorded at zero offset. Uh, so in, in case of, I mean, talking about zero offset, sometimes this zero offset is called, also called exploding reflector mode. So the point to be noted, so the time versus depth migration is actually the difference between two terms is not the time versus depth. Actually, it is the difference of migration consideration velocity changes in horizontal direction like that. Or both allows for velocity changes in lateral or vertical direction and yield a section plotted in either time or depth. So it's mean it does not necessary to be having the time or depth migration so it's just consideration of the velocity variation how we consider this velocity variations so now here actually uh, there are a very uh, good example or the summary of all migration so what you can do uh, we have two domains which is post stack post and pre and the two uh, based on the velocity variation is time and depth and the migration so from this part we can make four combination the first one is post stack time migration and the second one is the post stack depth migration or either you can go for pre stack time migration or you can go for pre stack depth migration so these are four combination can be achieved by this migration strategies so uh, if you look at the complexity uh, why we remain with the time migration and depth migration or pre or post stack so if you look at the let's start with the post stack time migration so post stack time migration is a very basic migration so in this direction increasing lateral velocity variation and in increasing structural complexity so let's say if you have zero lateral velocity changes and uh, in uh, structural complexity, then you can remain with the post stack time migration. So that's good enough to go. And then second is post stack depth migration. So the post stack depth migration is a wide range, but still the complexity is not that uh, it's not that complex of the subsurface geology. So it's remained with this uh, so wider section of post stack depth migration. But if you look at the pre-stack time migration, so pre-stack time migration, when you have the structural complexity and and you have the lateral velocity changes, then you have to go for depth migration. So if you plot one line here, so this is only lateral uh, complexity in sense of structure, complexity in sense of 
uh, velocity regulation. So these are the uh, things why we need to pick the time migration, death migration, pre-stack or post-stack. So that is a key figure of this uh, time and death migration. So now we're looking uh, from the example. So let's say in this case, uh, this is one of the models from Eaton, Eaton Robin training. So it's a velocity model uh, use uh, pre-stack depth migration. So why we use pre-stack depth migration? Because here the lateral velocity changes. So you see this color and this color, this is a quite high velocity and this is the low velocity. So laterally velocity is changing. So once we do the time migration, pre-stack uh, time, so because this is a time, so you can see this structure is moving upward because this is a higher velocity. So the wave, uh, travel faster in this direction so the time will be less over here but when you do the depth migration so you see all the events will be recorded here so you can see this place actually on the top you can see there is no difference because there is no lateral velocity changes so this blue layer is the same uh, uh, velocity in this and this section but once we're moving here so there is a lateral velocity changes so that's why we have the difference in this uh, imaging so that's why we prefer in this type of scenario that migration such as salt body deposit or this type of things so now uh, we look at the pre versus post stack migration so what are the migration classification according to its position in the workflow so the post migration has some features which is uh, less time consuming low cost and loss in data there is some data will be lost but if you look at the pre-stack migration uh, because in post stack you lost data mean uh, you will stack your data before migration so in pre-stack migration it takes long time and uh, a bit high cost than the post-stack migration and there will be no data loss because you are not doing any stacking before migration so now understand the flow of uh, post stack migration so let's say we have the input data which is in cmp um, gather so you see uh, the hyperbolic move out before nmo correction so once you do the nmo correction so you have this gather then what you do after nmo correction you do the stacking so with the stacking you will get only one trace over here then you have the velocity model which is taken from nmo correction or velocity analysis then you do the migration, so which you will get the migrated trace. Please. I, I mean, I'm showing just one short gather. If you have multiple short gather, then obviously you have the multiple traces here. But now if we are looking at the pre-stack migration workflow, how does it work? So same case, we have the short gather data, then you do the NMO correction, so which is the most initial part. So after that, what you do, you split into different offset slots so let's say nmo correction was in offset so you will have the 10 meter offset 20 30 40 50 and so on how big is your offset so all offset will come here let's say this is 10 20 30 40 and so on and with this all offset you have the migration velocity you have the subsurface velocity model then you will do the migration to each offset so let's say 10 meter offset got this one 20 this one 30 this one then after the migration either you want to do the stacking which will be the pre-stack migration cube or either you go for the angle stacks like you want to have the near mid far or full offset you can keep as it is with this data or either you do the stacking to get the uh, each um, one trace from all these offsets so that is actually the main difference between pre and post stack migration. So here is one of the example which is taken from Diamond Geophysical. So actually this is a very broad comparison with 3D post stack time migration and 3D pre stack time mig depth migration. So here we have post stack and time. Here we have three pre stack and depth migration. So if you look at the this uh, part of the section so you can see a continuity of this reflector then the second one uh, you can see over here as well this is also continuous then in the deeper section you can see the subsurface geometry is very visible 
So now there are actually some critical parameters uh, using this uh, migration. So in click off migration, you have the migration aperture, which is a critical parameter. Then finite difference, you have the depth step slice. You have to be uh, very accurate with the depth slicing. And the stroke migration, you have the stretch factors is one of the factors. Then uh, this is one of the example from Gico Parkla. So this is a quite old data set. So this one is actually unmigrated data. And this one is the post stack migration. So you can see a bit continuity of this reflector, but the below, you can't find any things. But once you do the depth migration, so you can see a bit continuity of this. Uh, so when we interpret this one, so you can see the solid body like this one. And this was the actual model to migrate this data. So another example I'm just going to show from the uh, Gulf of Mexico, which is uh, 6B data. So this one is velocity model. Then you have the zero offset gather data. So you can see a lot of diffraction here. So this is unmigrated. So once you do the migration using the, it's also actually is comparing the takeoff migration and uh, wave equation migration. So over here, you can see this bit loss of geometry, but here you can see every part of this uh, solid body has been recovered and you see the below reflector is also recovered. Then we have another, which is fracture model, which is Marmusi. So this is the offset data and this is exploding reflector migration. And this one is exploding reflector migration with diffractions. So you can see a lot of high resolution and the data quality has been improved. So that was all about uh, pre-stack versus post-stack and time versus depth migration. I hope you understand the concept of migration and logic behind choosing the correct uh, migration strategy to improve your data. Thank you so much. 